Hey, curlers, it's the start of the Grand Slam season. That's right, today it's Tuesday, October 1st. Uh, start of the baseball playoffs, too, Major League Baseball. Let's go, Mets. <laughs> but uh, for curlers, it's the start of the Hearing Life Tour Challenge, the first event on the Grand Slam calendar of five this season. Uh, the uh, Hearing Life Tour Challenge features Tier 1 and Tier 2, which makes it a little interesting. We're going to mostly be focusing on the Tier 1, but if you follow along with curling in general, you might like to just check in on the results of the Tier 2 tournament as well. Uh, those are serious events. They have the next 16 teams on the men's and women's side, um, whereas the Tier 1 event has the top 16 in the world, more or less, for both men's and women's play. Each of these tournaments, both Tier 1, Tier 2 on both sides, is a triple knockout event. Really easy to follow as a fan, right? Because... Three wins, your team makes the playoffs. Three losses, and you're out, and you fall from A to B to C, and then out of the tournament. I have to be honest, it's great for the players, too. They don't have to worry about things like tiebreakers or last shot draw totals. Um, the games are all that matters. Wins and losses are all that matters, and you have uh, your fate in your own hands, control of your own destiny, even without considering how well you did in the pre-shot uh, draw to the button. So let's take a quick look over at who's playing in this event. If I pull up those, uh, those teams, we see uh, the, both the men's and women's division listed in seeding order here. And uh, at the top of the list on the men's side, you have Joel Retnaraz out of Italy and, uh, you know, came off a great year last year. Uh, Bruce Moat, Brad Gushu, probably two of the hotter teams on the tour. Maybe the hottest team on tour right now is actually way down there at the eighth seat on the men's side in Mike McEwen, who is coming off just having won the points bet invitational and had a couple other event wins before that on tour. Having a great year. Definitely a threat to win again the way they're playing right now. Other teams in the field, Brad Jacobs, Ross White, Nicholas Adin, Yannick Schwaller, uh, Matt Dunstone, uh, Kevin Cooey's team, uh, probably still playing with three right now. I haven't seen any updates on that team yet. Um, if there are any updates that I've missed, I will have a kind of a weekend recap of the points bet invitational and the new um, power rankings up soon. Uh, and I'll mention it there. Uh, Reed Carruthers, James Craig out of Scotland, uh, John Schuster out of the United States, one of two American teams in the field, Michael Bruner. Cameron Bryce and Corey Dropkin rounding out the field. On the women's side, we have the red hot Rachel Homan team. Uh, Rachel Homan's team still hasn't lost a game this season. So interesting to see if they take their first loss in the super strong field or if they can run the table again. Uh, Silvana Tiranzoni, Unji Kim, Chelsea Carey's team, the team that uh, was formerly the the uh, Jennifer Jones team that Kelsey uh, Chelsea Carey is now skipping. Anna Hasselborg, so there's your probably your big five right there, but plenty of other strong teams too. Isabella Rana, Un Jung Kim, Carrie Einerson's team, Stefana Cost uh, Constantini, Italy, uh, Caitlin Laws, uh, Xenia Schwaller, Satsuki Fujisawa, Tabitha Peterson out of the United States, uh, Selena Sturme. Rebecca Morrison, and Delaney Strauss. I do want to talk about one team that's not on that list. If we go down to the Tier 2 teams here, uh, we're going to see that Kayla Skrillick down here, the number 8 seed on the women's side. And ironically, also, if we want to talk about a team on the rise on the men's side, Mark uh, Moskatowicz out of Germany. Those two teams have both started the year extremely well. If you were basing it just on what's happened over the last month or two, they'd both easily be in the top 16 here and and playing in these uh in the tier one events those i think are just off the top of my head looking at the the rosters probably my early favorites in the tier two competitions and we'll scroll down here you can read these teams off uh for american fans you have danny casper playing in this uh in the tier two event um, no American teams on the Tier 2 side for the women. Um, but a lot of other uh, well-known names here. Suchinski, Rumsfeld, Morazumi on the, on the uh, men's side. Hosley, who's off to a good start out of Switzerland on the men's side as well. 
Scott Howard, of course, a well-known team. On the women's side, Kate Cameron, uh, the Kitazawa rank, the Yoshimura rank, so a couple more of those very strong Japanese teams playing on this side, on the women's side. Skrillic, as we said. Madeline DuPont, always a good team. Uh, a couple more Japanese teams, Ueno and Tabata, who is off to a very strong start this year on the women's side as well. Uh, as we go down, uh, Mac Macmillan, uh, Beth Peterson, and so on. So lots of great teams in action. There isn't streaming for the men, the uh, Tier 2 side. You'll only have the streaming for those Tier 1 games. The great news is that on the Grand Slam of Curling website, which from where you can get to Home Team, their, their new streaming partner, you can see every single Tier 1 game, which was not a thing in the past. I'm sure they're going to monetize this at some point, but it is free right now. And I believe it's available worldwide. So even if you're not in the United States or Canada, you're going to have access to all the tier one games here. Not all are commentated. I think there's one, maybe two per draw that have commentary. Definitely at least one. Uh, I was listening to some commentary today in the Jacobs uh, versus Schuster game this morning. Um, and it was great. The presentation is great. Uh, great look for the Grand Slam of Curling. Looking forward to watching these all year long. Uh, and honestly, even if they're monetized, I'm sure many of us will be willing to pay for a subscription package as long as it's reasonable, uh, as we have in years past. So there you go. That's a quick preview of what to expect this week at the first Grand Slam event, the Hearing Life Tour Challenge. Tell me in the comments below who you like to win this event on both the men's and women's side. Even make a tier two pick if you want. Uh, that's a great tournament, too, for both the men and women. Uh, and we'll see how it plays out. I will give some updates uh, in the next few days. I am away bond spieling this weekend up at the uh, wonderful Broomstones Oktoberfest Open in uh, at the Broomstones Curling Club up in Massachusetts. Anyone who hasn't played in that one, great one to sign up for if you're looking for a fun but fairly competitive uh, early season bond spiel with a lot of great food, good ice, just a great time. And the weather's still great. And we have the fall foliage up here in New England this time of year. So no reason not to get up there. But even though that means I won't be able to give you day-by-day uh, -day coverage over the weekend, I will absolutely have a complete recap of this event early next week. Until then, hope you enjoy the games. Watch some great curling this week when you have the time. And if you're getting on the ice yourself, good curling.